Okay, number two, I guess, 5.35 in the morning, West Coast time. It's still the 14th of February, 2024. And we were talking about being of service, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, for the record, got to put it on record. This is the Weaver John C. of Roseman, California, 5.35 in the morning, West Coast time. It is February the 14th, 2024. Okay. I was a lot younger and a lot able-bodied. I did service. I did volunteer. And, you know, getting paid for it just kind of pissed me off a little bit. But if I did the work, I was doing it for personal pleasure at this point. So before I was taught to be of service, to give give back so I did it wasn't alkylates it wasn't rewards it was just knowing that a job was done okay didn't have to be didn't have to be super didn't have to be perfect or pretty I just got in did the thing got out that's how I kept looking at things if I had gone into the military, if the doctors had actually said that I was physically able during that time to get in, they were more worried about my heart breaking down and me having a heart attack and just dying on it right there. If I exerted myself that, that strenuously. Now for me, I didn't know what the hell I would be getting myself into if I got into the military. All I know is I wanted to be in the military. I wanted to be like my brother. I really had that hero worship going on with my, me and my big brother. I did. I really did. I didn't realize what things would be changing a person left and right. As a young stupid kid, what the hell did I know? Getting into the teenage, you see all these military guys walking around in the, in the high school campus, especially when you're in the 12th grade and you're about to graduate. Or you turn to legal age. They want to know if they're going to, you're going to be ready to be uh, conscripted if needed. Or, well, basically right now we've got an all-volunteer military right now. But they also needed to find out where your head was at. What kind of book knowledge did they actually put into your head? And what kind of creativity did you actually have? Because it could be useful one way or another. I think I was useful just for sweeping mops, uh, sweeping floors and mopping them. I really didn't look at my ass fabs that bad. I mean, I didn't look at them hard enough. I didn't know what a good ass fab score was. I mean, somewhere in my old records, if I still actually have a few of them, that maybe I still have the old ass fab, but I don't even remember what the damn numbers are anymore. But there was a certain age limit. That I think 27, 28 would have been the limit for you to get back into a military or get into the military itself so where they can actually use you regarding your skills. I think I would have been a soldier, ground uh, foot soldier. I didn't have the mathematical skills to be a pilot. I wanted to be a pilot. I saw the space shuttle. I wanted to fly the space shuttle. I thought it was the neatest damn ship. Apollo was alright, but we already got through the damn Apollo program. Now we're getting to the space shuttle program. We're going to have that thing for a lifetime. I want to fly it. Yeah, right. That didn't happen. <laughs> oh, no, no. You had to have good eyesight. Well, fuck that one. You had to have mathematical aptitude. Well, screw that one. You had to have... I didn't have it anyway. Don't even say about it. <laughs> I had the heart. I didn't have the necessary skills for it. I... I was not that communicative a long time ago. Except maybe if I was going to read a book, analyze the damn book, and tell you what the book was all about. 
book report? Fine, I'll do you a book report over here. You want to figure out what the hell is going on in this damn science book? Okay, fine. If you want to, me to tell you about a story about this particular book, okay, I'll tell you a story about this damn book. Okay, I'm a storyteller. What the hell? I just wish they had worked with my abilities back then. Maybe I would have been a better writer somehow. I think Ray Bradbury had said it that... He didn't go to colleges. For ten years, he stuck himself at a library reading books. I think he also said that in a, in a presentation he was doing to college students and to the public at one time, decades before he passed away. I also had him sign a, sign, uh, a book written by Isaac Asimov. He put Ray Isaac Bradbury on it. I still have that book, too. Loyalty. Loyal. Being part of a community. Being part of something that's... Something beyond you. A lot of us Star Trek fans out there wanted something better for ourselves. We wanted something altruistic, I guess. Something that we couldn't see here. And we followed this one man's dream. This one man's dream of a better future for humanity. The thing is, he wasn't looking for sacrifices. He was just a storyteller. Borrowing from other people who oh, said stories. Uh, using his own observations of life around him. Conveying that to people like us. And to our future generations. Trying to, sh trying to show us examples of what could be if we want this to happen here. Rod Serling was one of those guys. He had served in the military. He didn't like the military much, but he had served. And he came back as a writer. Other people could understand his viewpoints. But they lasted for a long time. Seeing futures, seeing things that could be achievable, I mean, that was something to be instilled in us. Okay, we got that. But faith? Uh, faith, loyalty, trust. Everything that this one particular topic or subject or country or whatever holds us dear and binded to. Okay, what's the faith about? So I try to look at the damn thing in the first place here, trying to scrape up a good analogy here. Faith, something of believing in it so much that you're willing to commit everything to it. When we are taught our secular studies, doesn't matter which particular uh, religion or faith we're studying, we are studying our secular. Now we understand there's powers greater than ourselves that still try to teach us one way or another, even through the sacred texts that we've been going through for centuries now. Trying to tell us one way or another, human behavior, human uh, modification, uh, how we look at things, how we treat everybody else, how we're supposed to understand concepts. Simple people back then couldn't do the deeper stuff we have right now. That's why they kept talking about the parables so much, because there was no sophistication back then, except brutality. If you're going to be subjugating somebody else, you're perfect for the damn army, aren't you? So let's get you into the Roman gear, and you become a Roman soldier, a foot soldier, being order conspired because of one divine person, the empire, uh, the emperor, or no, Caesar, that's it, okay, Caesar. It didn't matter what label, uh, label you put the guy in. He's supposed to be the one idiot in charge of everything. He's supposed to be divine. 
Ah, uh, but the sketch is on this one. Even divinity can be taken down with the point of a spear. How many Caesars but bit the dust on that one? But that's the thing we deal with these days, isn't it? Loyalty, faith. Our secular faith tries to teach us how being divine or being faithful to one or other things sometimes conflicts with the master one that we're taught. God has a way of trying to level out the playing field, trying to make us understand what the hell we're doing, and we're not doing a very good job at it either. We're not doing a very good job because we're doing all this damn stuff. God's got his own timing. Sometimes I don't understand it, neither do we. We want it instantaneous because that's what we consider it. Problem is, if you're that higher up in a dimensional planes, time is one thing. Time may be irrelevant. Here, we're limited. We're dealing with limitations. And therefore, we have to have it now. We don't understand that the long term, the long play is still at work right now. Well beyond our own short mortality. But we're only seeing this short mortality because this is what we're stuck with. So if we're going to be faithful to something, we have to show that we're going to be there for a short time, be absolutely entirely faithful to it. We're going to show that we're going to be everything we can be for this one. Throwing everything we got into it. It scares the hell out of me. And I've raised this one up a few times, and I'll still talk about this one because it still sticks in my mind on this one. Science fiction has always been a good teacher for me, my friend. It always has been. It draws upon instances in our lives, in our collections, in our beliefs, things we keep coming across. It tries to show us one way or another way on, into it. That's why a lot of us fans watched The Twilight Zone growing up, and then we watched Star Trek. Because we were seeing things. Even Shakespeare did the same damn shit to us. He was just a writer. He was a, a writer struggling to survive. Low in on a food chain. But he was trying to tell us stories about ourselves. He wasn't trying to be altruistic. He was just trying to fight for survival back then. But these days we think he was altruistic. Shit, we know better than that, don't we? So every time there's a writer out there, He's not doing it for altruistic. He's doing it for survival at this point. But it may come across as altruistic because we don't see the higher form or, or function of the damn thing. And you talk about the feelings that you've been struggling with. Sometimes I've been struggling with it myself. I don't like it when the politicians are using other, everyone else for their own damn good. Shit, just trying to understand the, the massive complexity of the whole damn thing. Sometimes I have to keep thinking about one thing. What is it in program, Daryl, that we have to keep things at? Simple. Keep things simple. The, the, an acronym, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> that was, that was said so many times in the meeting halls. <laughs> keep it simple, stupid. Who you call stupid? You're stupid. I, maybe I am. <laughs> you could have a doctor and be stupid. It doesn't matter. You could be brilliant at your own damn work, but when it comes down for something else that you have absolutely no knowledge or concept or experience about, yeah, you're stupid. Okay. I've also said I'm a fool. I'm an idiot. That works. I guess be, being service, you know, being in service, even if I'm a volunteer, caregiver, I mean, that was the thing that was also driving me there too, being a caregiver. 
understanding you're giving part of yourself to this person's life without expecting reward out of it just because it's not slavery it's not indentured you're volunteering because you know it's benefiting the other person and in one way or another it's going to be benefiting you not that it's going to be giving me a uniform at this point over here and military weapon I'm going to be conscripted into someone else's army over here and that's going to benefit me how no, that's going to be benefiting a political system. That's going to be benefiting a, a top dog leader who's also an asshole or an asshole or at, Or maybe, just maybe, there's a reason for it. People get so damn fanatical over this damn shit. They go nuts over it. And we grained with it for so many damn years, so many centuries. Sometimes you can't understand why. Fanaticism drives people insane sometimes. Hell, I've been seeing it sometimes. I, I gotta keep throwing out that word sometimes. I use it too much. While the news pundits will talk and talk and talk, I still have to get this off my chest. There may be some veterans. I hope that they listen to this. What you said, you're trying to make amends to. You're trying to make amends to. And we both know in the program. Sometimes it happens, and other times it doesn't, and we have to move on. We have to move on. I'm not dependent upon my subscribers. I'm not dependent upon my followers, if I've got any. I'm not dependent upon them. I'm dependent upon my power who I call God. My faith, my trust in him and hoping that he doesn't put me into a situation where I'm going to be going nuts or ape on anybody. That just doesn't happen. So I have to have enough faith and trust in that to realize that things will happen in the way they do and we just have to deal with it and roll with it. As for people out there who are still asking questions they'll ask questions and what you do from now on you've already made the you already tried to throw out the the olive branch now you gotta do what you gotta do to make amends you put it your faith and trust and your power your higher power, whoever you call, or whatever you call it. And then understand, some things will be coming to you. If they are supposed to, they're supposed to. If not, don't stress. Some things I do stress about because I'm getting inundated by it. I said before, I do my channel because of my own in emotional instability sometimes. But we are emotional instability. Uh, unstable all the time it's only when our emotions really get the best of us that makes us a cripple that's the thing that drives me nuts and I have to talk about it I mean people don't talk about grieving and mourning and and having that disrupt their lives like crazy mine it has I've seen postings on Facebook like crazy telling me thinking about one particular viewpoint that I've been growing up under and yet the reality is telling me another story. So that's why I have to keep talking about the damn thing. That's what I do. So yes, amends are made. Your amends are accepted. We move on. The world's still as it is. The world's going to be what it is. It's going to be one screwed up mess at this point over here. We still got to navigate our way through the muck and mire at this point, my friend. I try to keep my pride and my ego down a bit these days. How many shit? You should have seen me a hell of a long while ago. I thought I was the most proud peacock around here. I didn't know jack shit for anything. I didn't. I still don't. I still don't. No, I'm just grossed out right now because I just saw a Jack in the Box commercial. You know, the commercials look so lovely, and then you see the actual product. 
Oh my god, where's my bag to do stuff in it? <laughs> Bad taste in the mouth I just got. Well, saying the jack-in-a-box crap got out there. All the advertiser. You know, that's a commercial right there. I mean, that's an example right there. You see what's advertised. You, you see the adver the advertisement. You see the item here in front of you, dude. And how people use it and try to throw that out to other people. They want people to look at the ad the advertisement. I can't tell you. Sometimes I'm running it. I'm running into stories concerning about lawsuits happening over the advertisers and these other companies who are throwing out their products to be, oh, look how wonderful the damn thing is until you actually look at the damn thing. And it's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, what is it? I don't know. Never could quite figure that crap out myself. I couldn't. I didn't understand. Now I understand. It's all bullshit. We have to look at it a little bit more deeper with a little more clarity. And we have to keep asking ourselves and be skeptical at times. Is it right for us? Is it not right for us? If it's not right for us, then what do we do about it? Am I going to stress that Jack in the Box has a lousy hamburger? Do I actually have the need to go over to McDonald's at 6 o'clock in the morning to have a hamburger? Not really. But if I have a craving for it, I know what I can do. I've got frozen hamburger in the freezer. I've got sliced cheese. I've got buns. i got onions. i got moose tart. That yellowish stuff. Sometimes you put it on, on hot dogs. Yeah, I tried mayonnaise. I tried the combinations. They suck. Give me just mustard on the damn thing. It works. So that's my burger. They can keep their burger. I can make my own damn thing. I have my viewpoint. I have my way of looking at things. I'm comfortable when it comes down for service, what I can and can't do. I know my belief system, what I feel and what I believe in, what I think. Somebody else is going to think and believe the other way. I have mine. They'll have no effect on me if I give them that. I mean, if I'm going to let them take control over how I think and feel about it, then it's on them. They got control over me, but I say to myself, screw it, I'm taking control. I know who and what I am. I know what I think I can and feel and and talk about. I am imperfect as hell. I'm screwed up. I'll see a topic and I'll respond to the damn thing. If I have a difference of opinion concerning about how I view veterans at this point over here, that'd be my opinion, wouldn't it? That's why I don't bother about the subscribers and followers. They're going to follow me. They're going to follow me. They think I'm a leader. I'm not a leader. I am a guy dealing with my own damn issues at this point over here. They got a difference of opinion. They can go. I'm not dependent upon them, unlike some other people who are dependent upon them, because now they're at the, at the point of that. But this is, this is your decision, not mine. And I respect that. This is what you do. Okay. I'm not going to judge that one. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I will tell to the people who have listened to me. I'll thank them. One and all. Maybe there was something in my videos that actually helped them out a great deal. I don't know. Maybe it does. 
I'm just saying my own damn point of view that I never had a chance to do that in my life. There had been some situations where I couldn't get into a conversation with people on it. Sometimes I'm always afraid that there might be something coming back that I'm not going to enjoy the feedback on. Or, this is important that uh, you know, that I have to say it, and if it still ticks them off, it still ticks them off. But if it doesn't, all right then, deal with that too. I'm getting older, set in my ways. But I still try to keep an open mind of what's going on these days. I don't mind giving service, dude. I really don't. If I could do it again, I'll do it again if I have to. I'm not kicking back and enjoying the fruits of my labor, that's for damn sure. I'm dealing with the damn bug war. Literally, I'm dealing with an invasion of cockroaches that hadn't left this place for for years. So now it's my job to deal with the invasion of the little, little freaking monsters. Pissed me off. Waking up in the middle of the night sometimes and feeling this little walk, walk on my damn shirts. I'm like, will you get off of me, you little freakazoids? I'd like to get rid of these little bastards one way or another. But their way of doing it, it's not getting rid of it. Oh, no, the other option is try to move out. But in this market we have right now, out here in Curry, not to mention L.A. County, there's not many available spaces around. It's all on a constant competition, long-ass waiting list over here. And whether or not you're actually going to be able to find a rental house or at least a, an apartment to live in. I'm stuck with what I've got. So I have to make the best of it. Even if that means I have to live right next mar next to the Indianapolis 500. That roar that you hear? That's the morning traffic right now going over to Edwards Air Force Base. I hear that in the morning and I hear that in the afternoon. When the light turns red, they gun their engines and they race about 10, 15 miles till they get to the damn checkpoint. Then another couple of more miles, they have to slow it down a little bit when they're on base. But I hear we're supposed to have it about 45 miles. No, 60 miles actually. So it's scary and terrifying over here. So I got to deal with these morons. Welcome to my life. Anyway. Daryl, you're trying to have a good morning. Don't beat yourself up. Ain't worth it. Relax, turn it over, breathe. Pray. And then get on with it. <laughs>